Hello folks and welcome to Radwolf and Bushcraft. Thanks a lot for tuning in. In this video presentation I want to talk a little bit about common misconceptions when it comes to birch sap harvesting. And before we get to this, first of all my apologies for just offering you a video presentation. As you might have seen in the news plenty of times by now, we are facing a global pandemic. Many places are on lockdown. And I'm also affected by that, so I have to work from my home office and unfortunately cannot go out to shoot footage for you. But this won't change the content of this video. I hope you will stick with me up until the end of that video because you will be able to learn a lot, just like I did from my own mentors. And yeah, I would say we jump right into the matter. What is this video going to be about? Well, first and foremost, as I said, we are going to talk about birch sub harvesting and then focus on the proper techniques to do so. So why do we harvest birch sap? Well, birch sap is an amazing resource that nature provides basically all around the globe. And usually birch sap is collected at the break of winter or spring when the sap starts to move intensively in the birch tree. Usually birch sap is collected by drilling a hole into the tree trunk and then leading the sap into a container. So maybe your cooking pot, for example, or a tiny jar, right? After the harvest of the birch sap is done, the drill hole is usually plugged with some sort of a cork or maybe just a piece of wood that you have carved into a cork-like shape. Unfortunately, this technique is heavily propagated all around the world. Many people advise this technique, even though it is incredibly unsustainable, it is even pretty harmful for entire trees and if we take a look at the cost-benefit ratio, it cannot really be justified if you want to pay good attention to nature and if you want to protect nature. And let me just start off with that point. It's a very simple thought. If you want to harvest, let's say, 500 milliliters or maybe even a liter of birch sap, does that justify you killing an entire tree? Just think about this for a moment. And maybe you are a beginning bushcrafter and you just want to practice certain skills. So maybe you're thinking, hey, I want to go out, I want to try this, so I've done this in practice, right? Which in itself is a great thing. But maybe you do not have a deeper understanding of diseases that can harm trees yet. Or maybe you don't know anything about certain types of pathogens that can affect the trees, such as different types of fungi or different types of bacteria. And if you want to be a better bushcrafter, you need to take these things into consideration. It is our obligation as woodsmen or woodswomen to protect nature whenever we can. We need to live in harmony, in a symbiosis with nature, right? And just to be absolutely clear, I am coming from a place in which I made the same mistakes myself for years. I also did drill holes into birch trees because I did not know better. I did harm those organisms just to harvest a drink. And it really took great mentors of mine to put up a mirror in front of my face and tell me that I need to change my ways and that I need to work with different types of techniques, which I will show you in a second, um, to work in a more sustainable and a more eco-friendly or nature-friendly way. So this is not me pointing fingers at you, this is just about thinking thoroughly about what we are doing if we're out in nature. Okay, that said, let's just have a look at one very particular example of a pathogen that will affect a birch tree if you are drilling holes into that very tree. I am talking about Neonectria ditissima, also known as Neonectria galligena. This fungus causes cankers that can kill branches or entire trees by choking them off. Neonectria ditissima is a pathogen that is very difficult to eradicate. There are ways to limit its spread and the infection rate, but in order to achieve an effective control, we require a combination of chemical treatments of trees as well as cultural treatments. So think of certain birch farms that have a certain spacing in between the trees that are not natural, that might add certain types of plants that counteract against that fungus and so on. 
In other words, the cost for a simple cup of tasty birch sap is the risk of killing an entire birch tree with a fungal infection that is hard to combat even with modern technology or chemistry. Bear that in mind. As far as practical examples are best at illustrating this problem, here are a couple of photographs featuring infections caused by birch sub harvesting. These pictures are part of a study conducted by Laurie Trummer and Tom Malone of the University of Alaska. Both researchers have documented and analyzed the impact of birch sub harvesting in great detail and published a paper in collaboration with the US Forest Service for Forest Health Protection. You will find the full paper with all photographs and findings linked in the info box below this video. Make sure to check this out, also because both researchers give valuable guidelines and recommendations on how to harvest birch sub properly. Quickly summarized, one must not tap trees if tools are not sterilized properly and only tap trees after thorough inspection of their state of health. Details on that are mentioned in the study paper linked below. Here is another picture that has kindly been made available by Wild Wild Bushcraft and Nordic Bushcraft. Both schools did conduct a practical experiment with a birch tree that had to be cut down one year later. Instructors drilled a rather shallow hole into the tree, let it stand for another 12 months, and then cut it into pieces to control the spread of both fungal as well as bacterial infections. As you can see for yourself, one single attempt to harvest some sap resulted in a severe infection of the cambium layer, despite all efforts to seal the wound caused to the tree. As you can see yourself, the drill and plug method does not only pose a hazard to trees as such. As mentioned before, the yield of such a harvesting method does not justify the costs and risks that come with it, especially given the fact that there are myriad other ways of obtaining drinkable water out in the wild. One might argue that birch sap is particularly interesting to us bushcrafters due to its medicinal and nutritional benefits, and I fully agree with this point. So let us ask ourselves what we can do to minimize the risks of having a tree infected with a pathogen it most likely will not be able to cope with. Two years ago I learned about a different technique which, in my opinion, is the wiser choice compared to the drill and plug method. It goes as follows. First, sterilize your knife by exposing its blade to the heat of the embers in your campfire. You might want to bring a second cheap pocket knife with you, like for example an Opinel. Alternatively, you can use a lighter to heat up the blade in order to kill the pathogens attached to it. Secondly, pick a tree which has small twigs or shoots growing off the lower part of its stem, like featured in this picture. Cut the twig right before one of its natural nodes at an angle of 45 degrees. I have marked a suitable cut with the red line in this picture. You can then hang your billy can or container right onto that very branch and catch birch sap effectively without any spill or even the need to carve a duct. As far as the cut is placed before a node of the branch, we ensure that the tree has a couple of safety barriers between the main stem and the cut. During the healing process, the tree can then reject the injured twig more effectively in case of an infection and develop a knot hole protecting the tree as such. This is basically it. For more information, please check out the info box of this video. As usual, I will provide you with links to informative websites, blogs and papers on the subject matter. To conclude the video, I would kindly ask you to share this video with friends and family members as well as on your social media profiles. This is very important as far as reducing our ecological impact goes hand in hand with reaching more and more people. The more people will see this presentation, the more might work towards rethinking their own behavior out in the wild. This, in return, will reduce the amount of unnecessary damage done to nature. I do hope that you like this presentation and that you could learn a thing or two from it. If so, please make sure to give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment. Also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and to hit the bell button to receive notifications on upcoming videos. Finally, I want to quickly address the current corona pandemic. Please make sure to follow the advice given about social distancing and such. Humanity as a whole is facing one big challenge right now. And in order to ensure the safety and well-being of elderly people and those with immunodeficiencies and such, 
let's all push ourselves to more solidarity, okay? I wish all of you a very nice day and all the best for your health and that of your loved ones. Stay safe, take care, and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.